Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Vada Stiblers. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. Hey y'all, this episode is brought to you by Kensington's newest book, The Rancher Meets His Match. This book is by Kate Pierce, and Kate Pierce sounds like a fucking badass. She's a New York Times bestseller. Um, she was born in England, but after acquiring a degree in history and barely escaping from the British Civil Service, she moved to California and then to Hawaii with her kids and her husband. She enjoys subverting um, romance cliches and has done a series of ranch books. So this book is the fourth Western in the Millers of Morgan Valley, a spinoff of her successful books, the Morgan Ranch series. It focuses on a neighboring family with their own ranch and problems of the heart. It emphasizes family bonds, community roots, and pride in hard work. Uh, the Millers of Morgan Valley series promises swoons, laughter, and even a few tears. I am reading this book and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I can say I'm not usually a big ranch person because a lot of times I find them to be a little bit old fashioned and it's just a little too, you know, very alpha machismo, but not in the way that I like. But this one is highly enjoyable. So our main character, Julia, she is a lawyer in San Francisco and she's come home because her father is battling MS. So she's having to update his ranch, you know, to make it more accessible for her father. And she reconnects with high school classmate and her brother's best friend, Caden Miller. And he's kind of like the family jokester. Um, so he uses a humor a lot to kind of deflect his own issues. And he is a carpenter. And it's a really good series. Um, again, there's a lot of dealing with real world problems. It's very diverse. You know, it's not just a sea of white faces on a ranch. So go out wherever you buy your books and get your copy of Kate Pierce's The Rancher Meets His Match. On this episode, we read Jackie Collins' Lucky. Uh, if you are triggered by literally anything imaginable, you have should not be. Y'all, reading if this it book. happened to Marilyn Monroe, if a Kennedy did it to Marilyn Monroe, it happens in this book. Yeah, it's uh, you just um, you need to protect yourself if you are thinking about reading this book, and and probably not. It has the worst people in the world fucking each other's dads all the time. <laughs> it has child brides. Almost everybody in this was a child bride. It has rape. It has a it has a lot of rape and it has a lot of sexual abuse and and physical abuse. It has somebody trying to rape a four year old. Yeah, so um, it, it has yachts. There's yachts. If you're triggered. Yeah, by there's a like yacht. obnoxious like Russian nesting doll yachts. It has the kind of like train spotting dead baby that's completely gratuitous. Unlike in train spotting. Um, will, it, will, it does nothing to like increase any 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 positive thing about this book. It's just there to shock you. I will say like non facetiously that that probably like this book is usually horrible things happening to horrible people, and it's not really that upsetting. But the the infant death is upsetting. So that if that is something that's going to trigger you, you might want to steer clear from it. Yeah, the rest of this is kind of cartoonish, but yeah, uh, yeah, and because it was literally it was so gratuitous. So yeah, that one it was. Although I spent the whole time, I was kind of relieved when it finally happened because yes. you're waiting for it to happen until it happens. Um, it's got drugs that make nobody happy. It's got a lot of fat shaming too. It's got really gross teeth. I hated the teeth part. Like ever, all these these people would have these just nasty teeth, and then people would just stick their tongues in their mouths. <laughs> There's a lot of sticking your tongue in the mouth. Oh, um, mm-hmm. oh my god! It's like I've lost track. There's so much. There's you just take it away with the rest of it because all right. I, well, it's got racism. Yeah, it's got casual '80s homophobia. True. It's got the idea that you become a lesbian because you get raped a lot. Yes. Um, it's got a lot of really, really strong 80s perfume. And, like, they, they take, take a fucking bath in it, dude. You can tell. Yeah. Like, you can, you can smell it on the page. There's a lot of youth do. And I remember I wanted youth do because I think I'd probably read this. And my mom was basically like, only whores wear youth do. So, <laughs> um, yeah. I, okay. So, I am, as I've said before, I'm a reader's advisory librarian. So, I feel like I have kind of a, a professional duty not to use, like, values words about books. So, I don't call things guilty pleasures. Um, I don't, I try not to use things like clean romances or, or right. whatever. I'm kind of, I try to be careful in how I judge books that other people read. Y'all, this book is fucking sleazy. 
It is, and I think that's the point of it too. I think it is it's very trash. Much, it's very much designed to be that. Um, so yes, if that you know, it's it's kind of like Sydney Sheldon on mescaline. So, well, I thought it was Sydney Sheldon with tits meets Mario Puzo. Yeah, it, it has like. It's got, if you've read the book of The Godfather, like you think about it, like, you know, being this, being the film and it's all in sepia tones and stuff. In the book, it's all about this dude with a big dick looking for like somebody who can fit his big dick into. Yeah. And then there's like, uh, there's some crime. So I, again, all kidding aside, if that's, if any of this sounds like not your cup of tea, you might want to skip this episode. So moving on from our insanely long 20 minute um, trigger warning, not really. <laughs> We probably missed some, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, this book is like that, okay? Honestly, we're not going to get too much in the weeds or try, we say this, famous last words, about the plot, because there's a lot of plot. This is about a 700-page book. But um, we're not going to get really down and dirty into any of the horrible things that happen. So We're going to try to, but the thing is, it, it's difficult not to, because this book has like 8,000 people in it, but you can't really skip any of it, because I have to say, like, okay, it's it's trash, but it's like, it's really skillful trash, and so yeah. all of these people end up being important, and they all end up, it comes together like really satisfyingly, like they all end up in the same, like, dumb little house at the end, and, like, blowing yeah. each other's balls off. It's great. But, um, it is very interconnected, but also really complicated. Yes. All right. So let's see. I am drinking a fun bottle of rosé called Palm. I felt it kind of fit because we're in, we spend a lot of time in LA. We spend a lot of time in Las Vegas and we spend a lot of time on a yacht. So it's kind of perfect. There's lots of pools. Lots There's of pools. lots of like, yeah, both for drowning and for laying next to. Mostly not actually swimming in, either yes. drowning in or laying next to. So the palm is, is perfect. And for my, what else am I doing? I've been watching the new Night Stalker um, documentary. And I feel like it kind of goes because it's 80 sleazy too, but in a whole different way. <laughs> I was um, wondering about that one. I kind of like the Yorkshire Ripper one. We, we we did watch that and I thought it was really good. Like a kind yeah. of more about the, the social issues like the, that made it hard to catch this guy. And it had very good interviews with like yeah. not necessarily the people you would expect. So I, I, I got the impression that the Night Stalker one is kind of similar. It's interesting. I mean, it is very, it's, it's very stylized. Um, but some of the like detective work that goes into it is amazing. Um, and like, for me, I mean, I always knew like the Night Stalker was bad, but like, you know, he's never like put up there with the other ones, but this mofo, like Jesus wept y'all. This it's, it's a lot of it's hard. It's, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around. So just keep that in mind with it. All right, so I think we're just gonna jump into this because, like we said, this is a monster. So I'm gonna talk. And, a and like I read it on Kindle, and you don't get that physical feedback of having the book in your hand. <laughs> so I was like, I've been reading this book for fucking ever, and I'm at twenty percent. Yeah. So the the cover description. There are many, 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 many iterations of the cover. Um, the kind of classic one is Jackie Collins never really did like big sleazy covers. She always had her name, the name of the book, and like a piece of jewelry or something. Um, I don't like the new covers for him. It makes it look no very uh. safe, and I don't like that. But the back the back description is this book was 1985. Um, a hot-blooded beauty in love with power and hungry for pleasure. Lucky's dazzling odyssey and her trail of enemies sweeps from the casinos of Las Vegas to a private Greek island, from chic Hollywood to glamorous New York and Paris. She's a gambler and a lover. She's wild, savvy, and proud. So this is the second in the Lucky San Santangelo series. Um, the first one, and I should have had that kind of on the ready. The first one... It's something called like, it's like chances. Are, it starts with it's yeah. a one word thing, and it's yeah. like it's something like that. So, and I'm guessing it it holds the answers to all my questions. Probably <laughs> because like yes. um you know like there's all these things that like I thought were gonna like come out by the end of the book, and then I realized like by the end of it like oh no you're probably supposed yes. to already know. So chances was in 1981, and that introduces us to Lucky. Um, and then this one again is 1985, and then she's got. A whole series of this lucky so next book was in 1990 called lady boss and then this also became a television miniseries called lucky chances which combined the first two and it survived nicolette sheridan which i don't see as lucky at all anyway no. about about jackie 
Jackie was born in 1937 in Hampstead, London. Um, her father was a theater agent whose clients would include Shirley Bass- Bassey, um, the Beatles, and Tom Jones. She was kicked out of private school at 15 and then at that age had a brief affair with 29 year old marlon brando so a lot of what we're going to talk about in the book i think actually happened to her she got married twice um her first husband she was married to him in 1960 they divorced in 64 he died from an overdose a year later in 65 she married a art gallery and nightclub owner who was american named oscar lerman um he's 18 years on her senior and they got married at her sister joan's house and they were married until his death in 1992 so what's interesting is you know she started off she was an actress she was in a lot of b movies um again a lot like her characters and then she started writing um she wrote her first book let's see her first one that I'm trying to see which one somebody talked about with this. She wrote one called Love Head. Then she had one called, I'm sorry, y'all. The Stud, the stud. is quite early. Yeah, The Stud was in 1969. And after her first book, romantic novelist Barbara called Cartland called the book nasty, filthy, and disgusting and charged Collins with cre- creating, every per- <laughs> creating every pervert in Britain. Her book was banned in Australia and South Africa. Come on, that's awesome. Like I'm here That is that. awesome. And I, I did appreciate when I like was looking at the list of other uh, titles. Like one of them is called Poor Little Bitch Girl. Yeah. And that made me really happy. She's she yeah. So I feel like her books and what we're getting into is kind of this just outlandish world, but I think it's also very um autobiographical because we're gonna be talking about a lot of really kind of frankly upsetting things, but and kind of the feel of this is that this is somebody who is, you know, she's promising to be like, okay, I know these people and I'm going to tell you all about, I'm going to give you like the yeah. real story about like what these people do. And her daughter, and, and we'll make sure that we link to this. Um, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt, but her no, daughter wrote this really nice um, write up about her mom after she passed, I believe in 2016, about how she was a mom, but also you know, she never thought of her mom as famous, but she created this insane world and Lucky was one of her favorite things ever because she said their mom hated double standards and hated this whole idea of like James Bond just going around fucking everything. So she wanted to create kind of a female version of that. So you know, and, and Lucky she... is an interesting character. I mean, mm. she's well, you can tell that she's a little bit the the Mary Sue because she's less like oh, finely drawn than everybody else in the book, but she's she's awesome and she's badass and she fucks like a dude, but she also um she's not as smart as she thinks she is, which I think is yeah. <laughs> like it, it, interesting about the character. She's she's always like kind of like uh tripping her over her own TV because she thinks that she knows more stuff than she actually knows. Yeah um it's a, it's a it's an interesting character and kind of interesting in the way that all the characters work together in this yeah i mean yeah she's very i mean she's got some you know she's she's a character with a lot of agency um then we'll talk more about that as we dive in but yeah jackie jackie collins i mean you know she really even up until like two weeks before her death was still doing the damn thing and just going and like she said that her daughter said that this character kind of kept her going while she was battling cancer so you know she really created this kind of fantastic (laughs) not even just (laughs) these books because i remember reading um i want to say hollywood wives that's probably the one that i read um so she created these kind of books that felt very taking that tabloid element and kind of making it her own so just keep that in mind as we go through these book, this book. And this one was recommended to us by a listener. Yes, a listener on YouTube, one of the few people that sh- doesn't shout. So for our YouTube <laughs> people that have hung on this far, this is not the Nicolette Sheridan movie. This is not the audio book. So you can turn it off now and not yell at us about how we you need to start doing a, a weird YouTube comment per episode because <laughs> yes, like, Lord. y'all, all the all the weird shitty shit happens on YouTube, yeah. but not just shitty. I mean, we get like mean things said to us, like your voice is so gross, but we also get like people are really upset that we were mean to Sydney Sheldon. Yeah. I don't even think we were mean to Sydney Sheldon. No. All right. So let's dive into this 
book. We're going to try to go through the plot relatively quickly because, like, it's going to be questions that really break our brains. All right. So this book, again, is 700 pages. We have decided we're not going to tell you all 155 characters. So the easiest way to go about this is we've got four different kind of crowds. We have the Vegas crowd. The Vegas crowd includes Lucky, our main character. Her father, Gino, who was a former crime boss and now runs casinos. Then there is Jess, who works in the casino that... She's the regular person. Yeah, that that Lucky and Gino own. They own two. They own one that's a real one, the Mirage, and then they own one that's made up. Then there's Lenny, a comedian, and then Matt, who is kind of like the casino boss. Then we have our Hollywood crowd. Our Hollywood crowd includes trauma lesbian Susan, (laughs) amazing bisexual Paige, Eden, who is Lenny's ex-girlfriend from New York, Then we have her boy toy, whose name we don't even care about. And then Santino, who is a crime boss. Here's the thing. Lucky, in book one, shoots and kills Santino's father. So Santino Sr. has has been shot and killed by Lucky. Shot him in the balls, too. Yes. Then we have our jet set crowd. This is our Euro trash, so to speak. And they're even, all these people are rich except for the regular people, but these people are the super mega tabloid rich. So we have Dimitri, who is good friends with Gino. Then we have Dimitri's daughter, Olympia, who was friends with Lucky for about two minutes while they were in boarding school together. Then we have insane British woman named Francesca Fern, who I feel like looks like I don't know. Honestly, like a drag queen with a red wig is the way that she is described. Then we have the New York crowd who are Stephen and Carrie. Carrie is basically, I think she's kind of modeled after Beverly Johnson. Um, She's like a former model. She had a really hard life and like up until she married a rich guy and then she made up some kind of like backstory. And the, oh, it is important to yes. the story, but also that they are black. Yes. And Steven is So her there son. are people of color in this, believe it or not. Yes. So um not that Beverly Johnson had a hard life and made up a story. I just feel like that's who she's supposed to be is like kind of like a, you know, the like one of the first black supermodels. All right, so those are our crowds. We're gonna start with the Vegas crowd. So the book kind of opens with Lucky being a lady boss, walking around her casino, <laughs> to kick an ass, taking Business, bitch. Names. Yeah. Yeah. She's- and it's delightful. You know, she's like, she's the kind of casino boss who knows everything about it. And she, she built this place up by herself because her father was a tax, um, a tax exile in Israel for seven yeah. years. <laughs> and, like- <laughs> and her brother died, got shot by the dude that she shot in the ball. So she yes. has to be like the boy and she's, she wanted to prove to her dad, like, she's got major daddy issues. There's a lot of daddy issues. But she's hot as shit. You know, she's thin. That is one thing that we find out. She's thin. But not too thin. But, you know, she's very exotic looking. She's, you know, black hair. They say exotic all the time, which I think just means that she's kind of got an olive cast for skin. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but she, what you learn immediately is that she fucks. Yeah. <laughs> like they want you to know from the jump that she fucks and she is not interested in you still being there in the morning. I mean, yeah. like, you know, she, she, her, the, the person that she cared about was killed by ball shot guy and she doesn't care anymore. So she's going to fucking enjoy it. And yeah. it is kind of delightful. So there's lucky. Then we also have Gino, her father who, you know, he, he is modeled after the early kind of mob bosses um, grew up on the streets of New York, scrappy thing, joined the mob. Oh, I forgot there's a whole other child rape thing that was completely gratuitous in his backstory. Yes. Um, so there's two child rapes in this book. So, you know, he's 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 a, a mob guy. Like, he's kind of like Casino, where he's like, you know, I've, um, you know I've, I'm in the mob, but I'm trying to clean up and do it. You know, I'm, my money's clean now because I'm in Vegas. And he is, but it's not one hundred percent clean. Okay, like they keep saying that he's not a mob boss anymore, but uh... and he is (laughs) he is having a relationship with Susan, who is prim and proper and British, but also secretly trauma lesbian. And we're being flippant about it because of the way that it's approached in the book. Obviously, you know, 
we do not believe that trauma lesbians exist. Um, but you know, your lesbian. I mean, maybe other... somebody's a trauma lesbian, but yeah. this is the kind of book that, that, that thinks that most lesbians are trauma lesbians. Right. You know, it's like it like the so whole. So, there's also the Sydney Sheldon like schoolgirl lesbian yes. business in this. Yeah, it's just kind of yeah. But so what you learn is that so Susan is has like kind of rooked him. She is in major debt and she needs his money. Um, now he he's been married. None of these people just get married once. These people are like the more the merrier kind of people. And so he uh. was married. It, at least twice before his second uh, like lucky's mom was murdered um which i guess happens in the first book because i kept waiting to find out like who murdered her and you don't so i think you're supposed to already know um but they uh he had two kids and his other son and this is like some other weird 80s homophobia like um he was like a, a gay and treated as like you know that's why lucky had to be like the, the boy of the family but he gets murdered anyway so he's long dead and his wife is long dead and lucky's still around but they have this like um they had this kind of newly good relationship and, and Lucky is just so, so scared of like losing it. And she's really, really wants her father to approve of her and stuff. But her father is about to marry this Susan lady who she's just met and does not care for. Right. Because she sees the Susan. Yeah. So Susan, you know, Lucky has no problem with her dad, like, you know, being with somebody who makes them happy, but she's lucky. So streetwise that she's automatically on to Susan. So we, well, she's also really proud of him for fucking, <laughs> as, as you do with your dad. We also have Jess, who she, Jess is best friends with this guy named Lenny. Lenny is a comedian. He's a comedian in New York. He's hit a rough patch. And she's like, hey, come out to Vegas to the hotel that I work at. I'll put in a good work, word for you. And so he's going to do some shows there. Jess is just like, she works the tables. So she's kind of like just the person who makes like a regular salary. Um, Although she cheats, I think the Nevada Gaming Commission would be interested in knowing that. <laughs> and and she is married to this like um, this this stoner loser, and they have a baby f- for now. Yes. <laughs> Every time you see this baby, you're like, oh my god, this baby's gonna die any fucking minute because she goes to work because she has to work, and she comes back, and he's been just been like stoned up for the entire day, and the baby is like in I don't know a bucket. So um, and then the head of the like the again the guy that has a crush on her is this guy named matt at the beginning of the book he's super sleazy um he is kind of like the head of the the floor like he's the the main guy so lucky and her father have a falling out about susan in the midst of this lenny is trying to put the moves on lucky and lucky is like she puts him on her pay no mind list. She basically has him fired after the first night because he's like, hey, pretty lady, like you want to come back to mine? And she's like, sure. And then basically grabs his junk and he gets all scared. And then she's like, nope, we're done. Um, so she has him panned. And weirdly, the book keeps him from knowing who that was. Like like half the book, like for, for some reasons known only to it. Like he's always out of the room when somebody says who that was. <laughs> but so he's like, oh, fuck her. And he, he fucks on off to L.A. So he joins the L.A. crowd. Yes. And uh, he goes to L.A. because his ex-girlfriend Eden is out there and he's obsessed with her. But while he's in L.A., he does really well. He's at this old timey, like he goes to this like kind of institution um, comedy club and is killing it. Like he's, he is making it. So while this is all happening, we are introduced to Dimitri and his daughter, Olympia. Jesus. So uh, Dimitri is like, <laughs> he's basically just like a Greek tycoon. He's worth billions of dollars. His like daughter- these are on like the 10, like the Forbes, like the, the richest people in the world. Yes. Like the people... Robin Leach would have been, like, you know, talking about them on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, for sure. His daughter, Olympia, is a bitch. And we know that she's a bitch because she has the opposite hair color of Lucky and she's fat. She's not yeah. even really fat. Like, you know. No, she's just curvy at this point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's not even oh. zapdig, probably. She's just probably got, like, tits. Yeah. Um, and she's just the worst. She has a daughter named Brigitte that she ignores and... And Brigitte is a terrible brat, of course. Yes. So, basically, what ends up happening is Lucky gets pissed off at her dad, so she decides to fuck Olympia's dad out of spite. Like, she's just like, you know what? I need to fuck a dad. Here's a dad. And so, you know, she ends up banging Dimitri and then finds out she's pregnant. 
so at first she's just like kind of like she she and her dad have this giant argument she's like i'm out of the casino business i'm going back to the hamptons give me that house fuck you well they they were supposed to do like uh, build a casino from scratch in atlantic city this whole yeah. time and her dad is so into susan that he's not paying attention to her and she gets really frustrated so she's gonna do it herself but then she ends up pregnant and but in between here by the way jess's baby finally does fall in the fucking pool yes and so <laughs> and it's ghastly it's horrible and it's like a real life thing in this like dumb yeah. fantasy book and it's not cool y'all and but then, so, like, Lenny comes back to, like, um, you know, take care of her. And Matt actually, like, so I like, so Jess is, like, the good person in all of this. <laughs> like, um, uh, uh, Matt actually takes genuine care of her. Like, she gets completely drunk and he doesn't rape her. And so he's, like, uh, thinks that he's a really good dude. <laughs> he was, like, I was going to, but then I decided not to. So I guess that's another trigger warning is, like, wait, maybe this is a bad idea. Um. <laughs> So then she fucks off to LA with Lenny and becomes like his manager. So almost everybody, everybody left Vegas pretty much who was in Vegas except for Matt. Yeah. Mm. So Lucky calls Dimitri and tells him he's going to be a dad. And he's like, what? And then she's like, fuck you. And hangs up the phone essentially. Like she does not give the man (laughs) time to like adjust. But he eventually comes around. They start hanging out. They get married because he doesn't want an illegitimate child. Um, the baby's real cute, which is always helpful. Yeah. And, like, they keep it secret from everyone. She hasn't talked to her dad in, like, two years. Her dad has married Susan, found out Susan is a terrible wasp with terrible children who are, you know, awful. And he's just, he's, he's bit, his wings are clipped. His, his mobster, you know, Guido wings are clipped and he can't live his fullest life in Hollywood because, you know, his wife needs to keep up appearances. Well, and Lucky and Gino are sort of like, they're rich, but they're nouveau riche and they don't really care if anybody knows that they're nouveau riche. Yeah. So, like, they, they, they're they not really concerned with all this, like, these little, like, like trappings of the of the genuinely riche. Like, uh, they, they don't care about this European rich kind of stuff. They just want to have a good time. So they're, like, the fun kind of rich as opposed to, like, these other people who are, like, the boring kind of rich. Right. So Lenny is in Hollywood and he's killing it. Like, he is killing it. He's apparently really, he's a blonde man. You know how Sarah loves a blonde man. He uh, is, they keep saying he's Robert Redford. Yeah, he's Robert Redford, but he's got his own TV show. He's on all these, um, you know, Rolling Stone has done, a, like, a thing on him. He is, he's on the cover of People magazine. So what happens is Lenny gets invited back to Vegas. And while in Vegas he gets really fucking drunk because Eden is also in Vegas and he sees her and does not react well. Oh, and we should say that Eden, this is important, um, Eden is now, uh, at, at first, like, she thought that she was jerking around um, Santino, uh, the son of the guy that Lucky shot the balls. But in fact, like, she had no idea what the fuck she was getting into and she's now essentially owned by Santino. And it's, that's another thing we should have said in the trigger warnings because that's, like, a, a like an ongoing abusive, like, um, like a kidnapping kind of thing really like she she's gets, not allowed to leave the house like uh she's she's uh, constantly monitored he beats her it's it's actually it's, it's kind of more legitimately terrifying than most of the stuff that's in this but um so she but she's there uh with with the mobster and um and he sees her and it's like uh man it, it, he just she always throws him for this giant fucking loop like yeah you know he can't he can't so yeah so when he sees her freaks the fuck out gets rip roaring drunk and then connects with fucking Olympia, who is also there. Olympia was there with one of her many boy toys. He gets really drunk with Olympia. Olympia's like, hey, you know what'll be a good idea? And he's like, well, what's that? She's like, let's get married. And he's like, okay. And Jess is like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> Jess at this point is still trying to, like, Jess, Jess does that, but, like, what happens is when Jess leaves for L.A., Matt sort of doofy wearing gold chains and looking like, you know, a bohawk and then he has a glow up while she's gone and now she wants some of that sweet matt d and she's trying to make that happen so she takes but he's actually it's very sweet because he he like wants to convince her that he's changed and that he's not the guy that she used to know so he won't make a move (laughs) and it's very like uh they just kind of agree to be friends because neither of them can just come out and say hey i would like to fuck you which is funny because everybody else in this book has no problem saying i would like to fuck you right so 
you know, she's dealing with that and takes her eyes off of Lenny for a hot fucking second. And his ass is all like, and then he marries Olympia. So, well, Olympia is also trying to um, to hurt the feelings, which is funny because none of these people have feelings, of um, the rock star that she was fucking. And then it turns out that he had a 16-year-old married, like, was married to, like, a teenager back in Europe. And then so she was going to marry this, like, um, Spanish singer, but then he bored her. So, like, uh, she took a split second, like, uh, you know, an option on, on Lenny. And they they got married. So what ends up happening is like, she's like, all right, Lenny's not too bad because Lenny's actually like a fairly decent person. So, and, and Lenny has his mom who gets along weirdly with her terrible daughter. Anyway, what ends up happening is you've got now, because of all these factors that we don't have five hours to discuss, what ends up happening is you have Lenny married to Olympia. You have Lucky married to Olympia's dad. You have her dad married to, to um, Susan. And then we have all these other people. Well, Dimitri, Lucky's father, or Lucky's husband, every year has a big yacht party where people just go on his big fancy yacht for a month. So all these people are going to converge onto this yacht. So, <laughs> and they're the worst people. <laughs> they are the worst people. Um, also included is this woman named Francesca who is Dimitri's longtime lover and her poor put upon husband, Horace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Horace doesn't care. I don't know. Poor Horace. Like, or on the, on the yacht, or Horace finally has sex with Alice, who's there to watch the daughter. And it's like the first time he's had sex in years. So you're, but what you're supposed to see in this book, it, it, in a way, if you like the, the big picture of this book is all these near, these like near misses with Lenny and Lucky. So yes. the first time they meet at the very beginning of the book, like they they just did not see the attraction they had for each other. And then then they meet like at that party where he immediately goes and marries Olympia for no good reason. Yeah. And like they but they could have that was their near miss. And then both of them immediately got married to other people. And they, that, that's the night where they both hook up with the wrong people. So now they're going to come into contact again, and you can just tell that it's going to be another terrible mistake idea. <laughs> oh my god! So they end up they're on this they're on this big ass yacht, and all I can think about <laughs> whenever I think of yachts now, I just think of the Bravo reality series Below Deck, um, which is about the people that work on those like luxury yachts. <laughs> so that's all I th thought about this whole time. Well, anyway, they're like they're in the south of France or at some beach, and Lenny's just like, "Hey, I'm gonna mill around," and Olympia's like, "I just want to do cocaine and eat." So she's on the boat, and he's milling around, and he 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 sees Lucky. He still doesn't know who this bitch is. No. Like, and he, he watches her go, and she doesn't know who he is like, because she only reads her. like blues and magazines. Then, <laughs> we have to discuss like they they swim out, and there's a raft. But I don't understand the raft because eventually, like one old man tries to get on the raft, and then he sees <laughs> and like, they're, "Oh, excuse me, they're on a raft and they're <laughs> fucking." But I don't know, like, is it a like what what kind? Of, is it a big like floating dock? Is it a raft? I'm raft? seeing the thing in that Stephen King short story where where the the monster in the lake gets them. So I've never been able to look at those things right after that. But I thought that what was going to happen because like they cannot be that far from shore. Is that well, the the event here was going to be the paparazzi are going to get them fucking. But what? But no. I, I need to know what the, like because the other thing is like because of the like the British terms and stuff. Like okay, I understand. Like in Australia, they call like the what you call like a pool float is a a lilo or something. Is and then she refers to a pool float as a raft. I'm like, is it that kind of raft or is it? I like saw a it like as a permanent fixture, like you see in. Yeah. Like in, in lakes, but I've never seen one in the ocean before. Like a floating it, dock. Yeah. Like, yeah. See, and I'm like, okay, but like, it, I felt like it had to have some kind of protection because otherwise it's just two people blatantly fucking on a raft. I think it, it was, was two people blatantly fucking on a raft, but it's Europe. <laughs> I mean, it was wild. It's the it, 80s. Everybody was so coked up that they were like, okay. And some old man's just like, okay, get back to it. So they fuck it out on this, we don't know, again, canoe, raft, dock, whatever. Structure. They're they fuck it out in a, a thing floating in the ocean. I mean, it could it's have been. It's international in, waters. It could have been an inner tube. I don't know. So they fuck <laughs> it out, and then, like, she's basically like, see ya. 
And he's like, well, okay. And they end up, they don't realize until they get back to the yacht who the other is. They're at fancy formal dinner because Dimitri loves fancy formal dinner. And again, Lucky just wants to listen to her blues and like be left alone. And they essentially sit across from one another and are like, oh, like, shit. Like, well, my goodness. <laughs> and it's at fancy formal fucking dinner that, I mean, for, Olympia finds out, hey, one, my dad married my former best friend, and two, I have a little brother. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot. We thought of all kinds of things that this dinner. Okay, so we knew <laughs> that Lucky, to, to, to keep her from, like, having premarital sex, her father made her have marital sex by marrying her off forcibly at age 16. Yes. To a dude named Craven. But then everybody else at the table was also married off at age 16. It's, it's weird. Like, there's more child brides in this damn thing than you can find in goddamn Kentucky. It's, 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 don't tell me about what happens in, like, you know, other countries. These are all... <laughs> I mean, these are, all these people got married off it, like some of the like one of them was 14 it's it wild. was it's crazy it is nuts and they act like this is completely normal like the only reason lucky's pissed off about the whole forced marriage thing is that she didn't want to get married she doesn't say like i could have called the fucking cops i mean yeah. i get that like i'm sure wherever they lived it was legal if her father signed off on it but like but jesus people it's this pervasive <laughs> thing in this it's like normal so like you got that going on you got it's 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 it was insane and then she's like oh hey you're lenny you're lenny go his name is lenny golden which is fantastic <laughs> and you know he's like i want you so badly and she's like we can't we can't we can't I'm like well you just did why does it fucking matter so they do it a couple more times um she realizes that dimitri is not the person that she wanted So, okay, so meanwhile, while all this is going on, like, this is actually kind of the most time that, like, Lucky's ever spent with Dimitri with other people. Right. And she's realizing that, oh, well, maybe you, um, you know, if you're going to marry a dude 35 years your senior, you ought to make sure that you are compatible in any way whatsoever. Like, he's just very stuffy. And, of course, he's also, like, having an ongoing and clearly never going to stop affair with this Fer- Francesca Fern lady. Francesca but, like, Fern! <laughs> but he insists that they all dress for dinner, which is, like, fine if you want to. That's super fun. But if you don't want to, it's stupid. And, like, he only decorates in a not-80s way, and she can't handle that. And <laughs> Yeah, she just wants to wear her leather and her belt and just listen to Otis Redding. And like not be bothered, but he's like, "You're too young." Blah blah blah. Yeah, he's very he's like he's really condescending. So yeah, I know he thinks he can like tell her what to do, and she's all like, "But excuse me, I mean, I I'm your wife. I don't fucking work for you." And he cannot believe it. <laughs> like he is not prepared for this. So she is realizing that she made a mistake. Yeah, this is a huge mistake. By fucking this old man who's old enough to be my father, I won't get my father's approval. Um. <laughs> So they all like disembark from from yacht time, um, as we'll call it. And she basically knows their marriage is over. But she, I mean, her and Lenny have resumed like this affair. Lenny's like, I'm going to leave Olympia. She's like, I'm going to, you know, as soon when she married Dimitri, Dimitri promised as a wedding gift to help build a hotel in Atlantic City for her. And she's like, as soon as I get this hotel, I'm out. But then. Well, well, and we should say also that Lenny was so fucking stupid that he actually signed, and I guess it's supposed to be that he doesn't care about money, he signed a backdated prenup. <laughs> He's so dumb. <laughs> like, she had him sign it three days later. He's like, okay, dum da dum dum You idiot. This is like the richest woman in the world. Oh, my God. But, yes, dum, yeah, dum 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 They're all ready to leave their spouses. They're going to do it the minute that plane hits the, oh. <laughs> so olympia olympia and francesca fern i can't i'm never not calling her francesca fern and a couple no. other people were on a private lear jet um you know leaving the south of france or wherever to get back to new york and then the plane crashes mm-hmm. Everyone, i thought it was gonna be terrorists and i was, I was so excited for like a good 80s terrorist everyone Take his plane to cuba it wasn't everyone on board but one person died. Who could have lived? Yeah, it was <laughs> fucking, fucking Olympia. So, flash forward like three years later, 
Um, Lucky now has a toddler. She's still married to Dimitri. Francesca Fern was on board. She died. So Dimitri has never been the same. He won't leave his private Greek island. But honestly, even if you don't have a dead lover, who's leaving a private Greek island? Like Agreed. Fuck that. It's obviously amazing. I'm never yeah. leaving that. Dead lover or no. Francesca Fern or without. You're never getting me off a fucking private Greek island if I have one. So, but so neither of them feel that they can leave their spouse. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we have to talk about what happens to fucking Olympia. Olympia. Oh my god. Olympia has like minor she has like soap opera face scarring you know one of those where they could fix it with an operation but she's so revolted that she goes from and they put it in the book like olympia is now well over 200 pounds she is a <laughs> and monster. like they kept calling her like a mammoth and a manatee and a, i mean oh like oh I'm like, no I, I i disagree with you cordy i don't think that um that that Jackie Collins um, is it hates fat as much as um, Jude Devereaux does. I think that Jude Devereaux hates fat more than anybody has ever hated fat ever. She's got more like really like psychological damage, but th- there is more fat shaming in this book than in most books. But I still say that some of those uh, Jude Devereaux books, like holy oh, shit. So basically, Whew, what's goodness, happening? But... Hold on. Lenny Golden has thrown himself into his work. And then you got you got Olympia who's just now just lounging around and they put it in the book and I, I felt attacked. I felt attacked. Calf hands. I was like, you bitch. You <laughs> she's like hanging around in calf hands and all she's doing is coke. And let me tell you, not that I know I have never done coke. I think that it would be the drug like if I ever did it for 12 hours, I would be amazing and then my heart would explode. Like, but let me tell you, from the amount of cocaine that Olympia ingests into her system, this bitch should be a buck fifteen at most. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's how much she eats, Courtney. She <laughs> eats so much. Like, uh, she has in her new. Obviously, okay. I, I think what happened is that, like, okay, if she had two true, genuinely injures injuries injuries from the plane crash well then it would make lenny look like a fucking asshole if you wanted to get out of the relationship so what they had to do was make it be serious but then make it be her fault (laughs) and she is a monster she is a fucking monster i mean like an an unrealistic monster hold on i wasn't like she has a secret room in her house devoted to (laughs) cocaine it's like a panic room, but for, I, I gave it the impression that it is like so much more highly organized than the rest of her house. <laughs> it's like an apothecary in there. And I think she has like by this point graduated to heroin, but she has a fucking- No, that happens later. We see that happen. She has a cocaine room. She has a cocaine room in her house, and she's still the most- rotund person that jackie collins has ever seen it is wild so olympia is just she is basically it's a whatever happened to baby jane situation <laughs> where, where lenny's just like you know he, he's like but you're on that chair you're on like that is what is happening with lenny meanwhile you know you got sad ass Dimitri not leaving the island. Lucky's running her hotel. She's got her baby. She's got her awesome nanny that she hired from a diner that's a Jamaican woman, letting us know that Lucky is one of the good guys who doesn't see, you know, she doesn't see color. The and and there days. is um there's an incident. We should we should we should point this out where um of course Brigitte, uh, Olympia's daughter, is a piece of fucking shit and 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 says I forget what it was, but something horribly racist mm-hmm. um to uh, about the nanny and uh like nobody like blinks an eye and the nanny just beats the fucking ass out of that child. Yeah. I mean, and the child completely. I, we don't spank in my house, but I was all for Brigitte getting her ass kicked. So oh, actually, um, like the her, the nannies. The, the Brigitte's nanny does the hardcore ass kicking on her, like where she beats her for thirty minutes straight. <laughs> it was kind so, of like, I, like, which is a little like, so, don't you get tired? I mean, I would need a yeah. break. I would, I would get out of breath. Okay. But, I mean, so yeah. So what, what we have here is 
actually racism kind of used in a realistic we'll talk more about it later but racism used in kind of a realistic way except that of course lucky's one of the good ones and she's like you know trying to bring up her kid right so but, meanwhile, um, hold on. big shock that Brigitte is also a racist piece of shit meanwhile while all this is going on our new york crowd of carrie who we talked about and steven carrie had married a man who had kind of raised her out of the the slums and you know he was very rich she was basically a prostitute he met her really liked her wanted to marry her he made up this whole lie about how she was an african princess she had a son steven steven grew up the whole like his whole life thinking his mom you know was born and raised in africa and then he comes to find out his mom was like from queens and had not had a great life so he's trying to find out who his father is and she's like it could be one of like two people um one the situation is horrible it's this guy that essentially like this guy that raped her or two it's gino santangelo so his story is going around trying to find either there's one gino santangelo obviously or there's three guys named like freddie fisher so he's trying to find out so he's making his mother like have to endure (laughs) relive the most horrible moments of her life over and over um, and it's, it's actually it's, it's all quite kind of realistic because yeah. like um he's gotten like consumed with this and and she feels like she doesn't know anymore he he he's gotten so cold to her it's 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 really tragic it's like a among all this like completely ridiculous rich people yeah. nonsense it's these people having this like real drama that it feels so avoidable but also like genuine and it's it's, it's upsetting because it doesn't like seem like it fits with this, the rest of the book this part i think is really like it's handled really well because like she talks about the guy that ends up you know raping her calling her racial slurs and stuff like that which again is very rooted in kind of you know black reality in the 1960s when this happens and then again the 1980s when you know they are now so it's really interesting because you have this over-the-top nonsense and then you have this really kind of like poignant story happening the reason that it comes up is you eventually find out that Stephen, who in book one almost bangs it out with lucky in an elevator ends up being lucky's half brother so and i think that he probably comes more into play in the other books but he's a lawyer and he is also he is got a case up against um santino our dirtbag who is keeping who is sex trafficked eden and is keeping her hostage and I mean, it's one of those things where we keep on checking in with Eden, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. But you're kind of like, what? What does this really have to do with What's the main the story? I mean, like you, you know, every so often he's like, I'm gonna get that lucky San Angelo. Yeah. But like, yeah, yeah, there's there's no clear tie in except that like both of these like all these people have a connection, but their their stories don't meet up yet. Also, as uh, Stephen uh, was a DA at the time, and he was like, that was the day he was gonna go fucking arrest the guy who lucky shot in the balls but then lucky shot him in the balls first <laughs> so he's like um he's got blue balls prosecutorial style so what happens is like again we're you know by this point brigitte is 11 um uh, lucky's baby is around four three or four and- no brigitte is 14 uh, oh, that's right. She it's not 14. better. It's not worse, but at uh, 14. <laughs> so she has met this guy. Like, it's the opening, grand opening of, like, the Atlantic City. Um, and again, remember, Brigitte is Olympia's daughter, but Olympia is just hiding in her room, snorting co- t- cocaine, wearing calf pants, not seeing anybody. So well, let's point out, okay, so Brigitte is Olympia's daughter. Lucky's step daughter i guess and lenny's uh, the whole thing is in hold on it's just like right now right now at the current moment the current moment she is <laughs> brigitte's step grandmother yeah i, I it's, it's like a whole i'm my own grandpa thing yeah. the thing is fucking weird all right anyway so brigitte meets at like lucky's hotel opening this bargain level like actor i'm trying to think of who it would be who would be the, the well uh, you wouldn't remember him because he was in one movie and then like uh the the dude he gay hustled got him back by not letting him be in other movies uh, it's the whole he's, thing is very tawdry he's kind of like let me let me make sure i have the name of this right he's like dean cameron so he's like dean cameron who was in like rockula ski school 
He was also in summer school. He was one of the guys that was obsessed with, um, you know, like the 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 che- Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That guy, like the B movie king. You know, he's that guy. But she sees him. But he he had one real big hit. She's and you know he could have another one at any time. And either you know who he is, and you're like, oh yeah yeah yeah, it's that guy, or you don't. Yeah, he's fucking Dean Cameron. So <laughs> she's like, yes. I don't know who that is. So there you go. <laughs> your your husband will know who Dean Cameron is. No, got- I'm I'm 100 percent sure he will. Because he loves Steve School too. Um, but so she's like, you know, Brigitte sees it and she's like, yes, I'm going to nail that to the wall. And I'm not saying that, that Dean Cameron was going to bang a, a 14 year old, Dean Cameron. Don't sue me. Um, I'm just saying that esoteric level of knowledge. So. But she, to be fair, he has no reason to know that she's 14 because, of course, and this is not an excuse, but she has presented herself as much older. Right. So she meets him at, that, at this point, the hotel opening. She has really disappointing 14 year old gross sex. It's upsetting. It's described. Skip that part. Um, yeah, I kind of wish it hadn't been described. It was like the most it was like the most vivid sex in the book, too. Um, I know. I know. There's so much sex in this book. And what do they actually like give you like details on is when the 14 year old gets statutory raped. Yeah. So. <laughs> She later goes out to L.A. because she's going to visit with her mom. And, you know, first she goes and sees Alice. And Alice has got... Anyway, what happens is they're all... They're all hanging out. Are we not going to talk about what's... What's... What's um, what's, what's, what's just... um, Confusing Alice? (laughs) Because I I didn't mention this in my trigger warning list. Are we talking about Alice? Alice has taken up Ah, with a... ah! My understanding is that the proper term is little persons. <laughs> Whose name is Columbo, I think. Claudio. Claudio. And I feel so bad for Claudio because he's here for all this horrible stuff. And he's like, what? I just, I just showed a fuck Alice. <laughs> like, what the hell? So that I remember, like, so Claudio is, 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 is just like a coxman. <laughs> And so and she really wants to get Claudia to come over because she would like some more of that business. So she'll do any, it's a, <laughs> she'll do any, and tell any lie and accept any lie from this dumbass fourteen year old girl. And I mean, come on, Alice has got to be more with it than to buy these fucking lies for this fourteen year old girl. But Alice would like to get fucked by Claudia. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we have Alice and Claudia. But what has happened is Dean Cameron is doing a porn like basically doing a soft like soft core porn with eden and he has fallen in love with eden and he is like I i'm prom- not even sure it's soft core he's I like mean, she gets raped on camera yeah. he says to her it's, which is also upsetting by the way he says i promise to get you out of this and what he has done is he remembers brigitte realizes who she is and has her phone number and is like, hey, baby, come over. And his plan is to kidnap, for t- like, kidnap her, quote, unquote, get some money so he can, he and Eden can, like, you know, peace out to Mexico. But then things but he, happen. Well, to kidnap her, like, with her consent. Yeah. Like, the idea is he's going to tell her the lie, like, look, baby, I didn't know you were 14 that I found out you are 14, which I would have liked to have, like, to have seen that part happen. But then he's like, so... They'll never accept us being together. So what we have to do is we have to do this kidnapping thing and then you go home after that and then I'll come get you with uh, no intention of going get her. In other words, okay, he's a sleaze bag, but he's not, um, he's not meaning to hurt her. Right. He's, he never intends to like harm her. And then she shows up with Lucky's kid because she's like, well, I got to bring him because Allison and, and the Coxman Claudio are hooking up and because our, like the nanny of the kid like um alice makes this terrible food and it breaks this poor lady's crown <laughs> i mean like it's, it's a comedy of errors a little bit except that it ends up with this child this four-year-old child being this care the this 14 year old child and it would have normally been fine because most 14 year old child are not trying to star fuck but um brigitte is not most 14 year old children so, so what happens is no you tell yeah. okay so what happens is brigitte thinks she you know she's staying over at dean cameron's and <laughs> she um you know she everything's fine we're gonna get a letter from dean cameron's people <laughs> oh my god i hope so um i hope he autographs it because i love dean cameron but 
so what happens is while all this is going on, Santino is not dumb. He realizes that Eden has been fucking Dean Cameron. And so he, he, it's upsetting. He really, he really beats the crap out of Eden. For and life. this guy is like legit scary. Like, um, He's all these other people are, they're, they're, all these other people are like connected and like scary and that like, ha ha, like, you know, no, this guy is like, when things get real in the Sopranos and you remember that these people are monsters. Yeah. It, it, it's like that, but all the time, like this guy is like a, a really genuinely scary guy. And you can see that from the outside. And the fact that Eden can't is very frustrating and frightening. Yeah, so so he goes to Dean Cameron's house, sees it, it like I like the last half of this book is real or not last half, but like the last hundred pages are page turners. So he sees Brigitte with this kid, and he's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" So she's going, and he's got a gun essentially to Dean Cameron's head, and he's like, "Hey, you just let a meal ticket walk out." And he's like, "That's Lucky Santa Angelo's kid and Olympio, whoever's kid." So the, they end up back. Stanislopoulos. Yeah, they end up back in the clutches of Santino. Dean Cameron is now shot, killed. So what ends up happening is Eden finally does what Eden should have fucking done all along because Santino is an Italian caricature. He's got, of course, a fat Italian wife. Mamma mia. So she ends up calling the wife and says, hey. She talks like I'm that, your- by the way. She talks like that. Yes. She talks like that. I'm Chef Borardee. Like, it's it's really comical. So she calls the wife and is like, I've been sleeping with your husband. I live here. And this at this point, Stephen has shown up because he's going to have it out with Santino about a wholly other thing. And she's like, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go to Blue Dre Drive. So he follows her. Lucky. Literally 5,000 people are now <laughs> converging on Blue Jay Drive because, I, oh, oh, they did a, a ransom thing. We didn't say about the ransom yeah, thing. There's a ransom. So, um, what's his face? I don't even remember the name of the actor. You keep Dean Cameron. About. <laughs> Dean Cameron has called, but she talked. He talked to Alice, and he should have known that that was a non fucking starter. But like with these complicated ransom instructions, and Lucky's on a plane at the time, so until it, like the time is ticking away, she hits the ground, and then she hears about it. Like nobody even knows this child is missing because these people are incompetent parents. Nobody in this is a competent parent, and and so she gets the money together. She does the handoff, and well, actually, we never find out what happens to the money. That never happened. Like that, that never comes up again. But then, like, uh, so what she does is she calls in a favor. We don't even hear to who, but the favor comes with a van that's like a surveillance van and two extraordinarily competent armed thugs. The <laughs> it's, it's, it's the Guardian right? and and something else. <laughs> yeah, they've got like names like the Guardian is here and then the Enforcer. And I was like, okay, so we got the A team. And yeah. So meanwhile, like everybody's converging about to come in the house and then upsetting things are happening in the house because Santino has a camera and he essentially strips both kids. We know that he clearly rapes Brigitte and then yeah. he's, he is essentially at the point of like attempting to rape the the baby, the boy. And then there's the mama Mia shows up, like bust through the door. Then there's a gunfire. And then the book is like, the book had started with, a, a, I should have brought this like a trial, and it's. Lucky's I had completely for forgotten murder. about that and by the you, time we get to this point, though. Like, like I was like, oh wait, that so, sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> like, I it starts with media then, right in the trial in the sentencing part of the trial, and I, I had not yes. remembered any of that. <laughs> and so the book, like you know, it, it goes black, and then it comes to the trial, and Lucky is found guilty for murder. But then it doesn't matter because Brigitte stands up and screams i did it and you find out that brigitte kills santino because he's about to rape her little brother and like just say that man like why are you guys like that's all you had to say it had been done like oh she'd been tried in the tabloids oh, she'd yeah. been tried for lots of shit in the tabloids so, <laughs> all these people been trying the tabloids oh and meanwhile while all this is going on poor fat coked out olympia has hooked back oh up God. with her rock and roll guy where she does a lot of heroin and then both her and he die like that's olympia just yeah. dies naked just like bloated and naked wallowing on a bed and the hotel manager oh god this is gonna be paperwork <laughs> and yeah so what the book ends with like brigitte is now 
fine because, you know, she has Lucky. And and then Lucky marries Lenny. And Oh, we should have said uh, Dimitri died of a stroke. It didn't matter. <laughs> her father broke up with Susan, you know, and like this Well, so her father walked in on Susan and Paige together. Yeah. Oh, I don't think we said okay, so Paige is awesome. Paige is my yeah. favorite person from the book. So Paige was fucking Gino and was fucking Susan. Yeah, the uh, and she's just like well, she's, she's like, like earthy. She's like uh, like, no, like, she's, like like she's never described as attractive. She's described as sexy, but just like as like frizzy haired. But she wears like her skirts cut up to her. You know, I mean, she's as earthy star. as somebody who can drive a gold Porsche can be. Like, <laughs> she's a decorator, and you first meet her when Eden gets to decorate this new yeah. house that she doesn't realize is going to be her prison, and she walks in, and Eden, this naive dumbass 1985 fucking model turned actress is like i want um everything in like off-white and like silver metal and with like furs yeah and and Paige is like yeah okay we'll give you the porn star special yeah like uh, you know you you know from then that you're gonna like Paige. That and then you don't yeah. know how much of Paige you're gonna see well, what's funny is like Paige and you know Paige and Gina broke up briefly after the the great you know catching her with with Susan, but then they end up back together, so it's kind of nice. Yeah. Um, well, but that's an excuse for him not to be reachable when his when his grandson was abducted. Oh my god! So, <laughs> yeah, oh my god! So yeah, again, this is like this book is eight hundred pages, and there's a lot of stuff that we missed, but we're gonna do. Like we wanted to kind of go through it quickly so we could do questions. And we're going to do questions and get this ball rolling. So, question time. Okay. Big dick energy or big dick energy? There's a lot of dicks in this book. A lot of dicks. Dicks on parade. All right. So, I guess that we could just be. Let's run them down. All right. Let's let's, let's dick rate. Okay, I it's think like the, bankrate.com, but for dicks. I think the biggest dick is Matt's dick, obviously, because Matt is the best dude in the book. Like, he, he really cha- he he completely like remodels his dick. Mm-hmm. When we meet him, his dick has like oh, it's great. Like they they talk about his apartment, and his apartment is so sleazy. It is like he, he has the initials on every rocks glass, and I I took that kind of personally because my dad was a big monogrammer. Because my dad was also a nouveau riche. I love a monogram. I mean, again, I'm a southern woman, so of course I love a monogram. But also, like, it's his, it's like his gold chains, and like, you feel like he's like a 70s, like, when the book starts, it's in late 70s. So you feel like he's very much doing the John Travolta, like, big lapels, like, gold chains, like, and he's clinging on to his youth in a gross way. Yeah. You know, like, his hair has, like, a lot of product in it. He's, like, it just, you know, he's got, like, too much of it that he's trying to do a thing that he doesn't really work with. And he's always dating these, like, 18-year-old showgirls, which is gross at his age. Right. Yeah. But he has a big glow up. Like, uh, he realizes that it's not he's- just that he's, like, oh, I want to fuck Jess. I want to change my life to fuck Jess. He looks at Jess, and he's, like, ah, this is sad. I need to fix this. And he does. He does. Like, he gets, like, you know, he cuts all that hair off. He gets into his job in, like, a really legitimate way. He gets a very, like, um, masculine but, like, not, not, not gross apartment. He starts working out, not pretty, like, you know, just, like, taking better care of himself. And, again, he's, like, he's attracted to Jess. And the whole time, we haven't really talked about Jess in the book because, like, she's the most sane, confident person. Like, she becomes Lenny's manager. And, like, she's just... She's very hyper confident. She's very like aware. She has dealt with the tragedy of the loss of her child. You know, she's she's doing the best that she can. And like her and Lenny probably have the most or her and well, her and Lenny is a whole other story because it's a really yeah. interesting, great thing, and we'll talk about that later. But her and Matt have this really great chemistry, and you kind of wish that you get to see them get together. It happens off book. Yeah, but I hate that. And you know, also, and I mean maybe you can speak to this. Um, so there's kind of an, it's not, it doesn't have the word epilogue in front of it, but there's sort of a, how did everybody end up? And everybody's having babies and and she's having twins. And I almost feel like, not that I want her whole life to be about her baby's tragic death, but I kind of feel like that they they just drop that in and it's like she forgot about the baby. And I, 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 I don't know. So I think what happens with these types of things is one it's 
I mean, it's hella something for like Jackie Collins to write about this in 1985 because people don't write about dead children. You know, um, this is a very real thing that happens to people that aren't fucking stoner drug addicts and leave their, you know, sliding glass doors open. It happens to people all the time. So I think people want a happy ending and they want, oh, well, you know what? Oh, just, she's not only just having a baby, but she's having a baby to make up for the baby. You know, like, that's what you get a lot of. Like, and it happened, it happens a lot in yeah, romance. I'd like to see a me. romance novel where somebody loses a, huh? Now you're cut It seems out. distasteful to me. Oh, no. Well, I would like to see, what happens is I'd like to see a romance where somebody, like, loses a baby and then just doesn't have a baby like you know but they always end up having at least one if not two you know it's always like well, a, I forget who I mean I don't I don't I think it was that you maybe liked it or you would respond or something but um to um that there's somebody who, who said on Twitter that like if, if it's an infertile woman like a woman who has struggled with infertility at the beginning of the book they flip to the back and if that bitch has a baby at the end they they stop reading them. Yeah, that's what always ends up happening. Like, yeah. it's, you know, like some miraculous thing. So I think, again, this is 1985. Obviously, people want that. I mean, you want that happy ending. So I don't know. Like, good for Jess. <laughs> she got the glow up. But yeah. But yeah. So Matt, I think, had the biggest, he had the biggest dick glow up. I yeah, think he, he, yes. His dick got the improved. Everybody else's dick, like, uh, I don't know how it didn't fall off because everybody else's dick had been in places where you should not put it down. I guess our other dick is Lenny. Lenny's dick. Um, Lenny and Lucky. Well, Lenny's dick got an emotional glow up. Yeah. <laughs> he he learned to stop just like uh, fucking women just because he could. And yeah, stop he did star thing you know where all of a sudden you can fuck anybody you want to so you do it a lot but he's also kind of obsessed with you know he was obsessed with eden and that whole thing and then you know I, I don't know like lenny's it's interesting because and i think this will be like in a later question lenny's just sort of like there like i like lenny lenny's great with the kids he's a nice guy he's fine but he's never like the focus of this book. This book is like Well, he's not active. I, like almost everybody in this book, and this is something to recommend this book. This is why this book is kind of exciting. They're active. They are doing shit. And yeah. their shit might they might be doing is like, oh, I don't know, marrying their children off at age fourteen <laughs> with fucking babies. But but they're doing shit, right? Yeah. Like they're not just sitting around waiting for shit to happen to them. But Lenny Lenny is a passive uh, character. Yeah. Like, I mean, you do feel like, obviously, I think what's interesting in this is that Lenny is a very beta male and, like, Lucky's very alpha female. So, that's kind of, like, it's, that's a fun, especially for a book, of, like, from this time period, that's a fun, you know, dynamic to have. Um, and then the rest of it is just old dicks just flopping around everywhere. Well, I think we have to talk about Dimitri, don't we? Because that is the only kind of hot sex scene in this right and so this is a guy who comes on with a good dick right and, and saying, like it says that his like his fingers and his tongue are both thick and i'm like oh that's kind of gross but kind of hot but then once you get done fucking him you find out you have to live with him and it's kind of weird and boring and and he doesn't want you to wear what you want to wear the hottest sex scene in this book is between Lucky and Dimitri. And basically, it's not even sex. It's him going down on her. And it's, like, really, ooh, yeah. But then it just, like, after that, it's, like, meh, yeah. Um, it's weirdly realistic that, like, um, you know, she had this idea of what it was going to be like. And yeah. then it was not that. Yeah. <laughs> so I think what's interesting, and I think, again, it goes kind of, like, to our probably, like, to question number two, which you can ask. We'll lead into it. All right, would you talk shit with her about the heroine? So I think what's interesting about this book is that, and this is, it goes into like what Jackie Collins' daughter said about being tired of the double standard. The women mm -hmm. in this book, the women like Lucky Santangelo like fucks like a man. She fucks like a man. She does business like a man. She has the emotional like capacity a lot of times like of a man. And I think that's really interesting. I really liked her. I think she's got a lot of daddy issues. Mm -hmm. And, but she's, I mean, she's 
I can see why people, I can see why these books were huge and I can see why people loved them because especially imagine being a woman, like, you know, having to work, like being a career woman in the 1980s and just taking shit from men all the fucking time. Like, yeah, you read two books and one is The Flame and the Flower and one is this. You're like, shit, yeah. Like, you know, Lucky's, yeah, right? Lucky Santa Angelo is, is basically, she is that Bond character for women because she can be the alter ego. She can be the place where your imagination can go and play, where she shoots men in the dicks, where she, like, can order hits on people, where she builds casinos, you know? Like, she... But she's kind of underwritten, but then at the same time, I, what I think, like, like I said earlier, is so interesting about her is that that she is flawed. I mean, like, she absolutely thinks she's in control, in control of situations that she is not in control of. Right. And uh, what's interesting also, the structure of this is clearly you are meant to... Uh, contrast her with Olympia. Right. Like, they were kids together, they were very similar, and now Olympia is, like, the, uh, well, for one thing, the, which is hilarious, because Lucky is also filthy rich, clearly a problem with Olympia, she has too much money. Yeah, you know? and no direction. And, like, you know, and, and I think it's the thing of, like, Dimitri just inherited his money, and Gino made his money, and... Mm -hmm. It's a thing of like having seeing a work ethic versus just being born into stuff, you know, is what you're supposed and to think. The, the book actually says many times, too much too soon. And yeah. I mean, like, so I, I, I grew up in, um, I went to the kind of high school with, that had more than one kind of, I guess, socioeconomic zone in it. Yeah. <laughs> and so there were people in there who were, um, had names but no money. And there were people who had nothing. And then there were also people who had money but no names. And, um, yeah, I, it, it's like the, it, entirely different ecosystems, but certainly Olympia's problem is that she is bored and has no idea how to deal with that. Whereas when Lucky's bored, she just builds a business. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I really, I, I can see, and I think it is wildly fascinating, like how much of Jackie Pop Collins was probably put into Lucky because, you know, when you look at her, autobiography you know like the whole getting married super young having an affair with somebody when she's 15 like I feel like she probably put a lot of herself in these books like and I, I like her I like her a lot and I can see why she's an iconic character and why people I think it, I think what's interesting is like and great is that these books have such a devoted following you know like Lucky is like you were saying earlier Lucky is you know she is the Mario P or Jackie Collins is like Lady Mario Puzo, you know? Yeah. Like, well, and I mean, like, also, I mean, this is the second Lucky book, but it is not the last Lucky book. She wrote about this for the rest of her life. Yeah, and like, like, obviously, she had a deep connection to this character. And I mean, like, like, like the character, like the 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 book titles are like Goddess of Vengeance. Yeah, you know, like it, she obviously has like a tie to this, you know. She's yeah, and you, you can tell that she loves this character. You can. You mm -hmm. can tell that she really cares about it. Yeah, because, I mean, Lucky Santangelo is Michael Corleone, you know, like, for sure. Yeah. And so, I had to keep revising my uh, my mental image because I kept forgetting it was 1985. So I would I'd be like, oh, no, 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 make the hair bigger. <laughs> well, it's wild because, like... <laughs> It, I can't see like for the like the t like the the mini series or whatever like Nicolette Sheridan is like super blonde and that is not who mm -hmm. this person seems to be like yeah they use know. the word exotic every other word with mm -hmm. her and they just mean Italian <laughs> this is America Italian is not exotic <laughs> <laughs> all right so. Bechdel the bitch. What do you think? This is a fascinating question because yes, there are. It passes the Bechdel test. I mean, it, like uh, because like if nothing else, Susan is fucking page. But what's interesting about this is I think this is a bit rare in this kind of book. Is that there is actually a really great male female friendship in this that um, yes, Lenny and Jess have a and everybody's like y'all fucking y'all fucking and like no, they're just like they've been they're childhood friends. They've been friends like forever. And their friendship is, like, legit and realistic and, like, real people stuff. Yeah. And, like, nobody has ever, like, it's not one of them secretly in love with the other. It's not yeah. just hating Lucky for, like, stealing her man. 
So you have that relationship, which is great and super forward thinking. You have Lucky, who is great and super forward thinking. And then you have the fucking Olympia problem. Mm -hmm. Because Olympia, like, the way that one, Olympia probably first starts off at, like, she's, like, five foot. It doesn't matter. She, She probably starts off at, like, 140 pounds. And yeah. then, you know, she ends up like, it doesn't matter. She's ma- got big tits, okay? That's it doesn't it. matter what tits. her weight is. But, like, I think I tried to look it up on, like, the, the with Kindle, and I couldn't get a, a good reading on it. But, like, the word fat is used in this book it, almost, like, over 100 times. Like, And it is that extremely vintage romance thing where there's two women and they have opposite hair colors. Yeah. Yeah, one's yeah. blonde, one's brunette, and then, like, but just the way that they talk about, the way that Jackie Collins addresses, and again, I know it's 1985, addresses weight is disturbing, because, you know, there's one character where it's, like, it's it's complimentary in that she bordered on anorexia. Yeah, like, uh, oh, it was uh, the um, Susan's kids, Yeah, and Gina's kids would meet them, and he's just like, oh, wow, those are way better than my kids. One of them is a little bit anorexic. Yay. Yeah, and then you know, then again, the way that dealing with Olympia, it's not just it's not just saying she's fat. It's the the globs of flesh. It's the you know miles like the 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 terminology used for her mammoth came up. Yeah, yeah is is horrifying. And I you know part of me thinks, and I was reading a little bit about the Collins sister. I think like. At one point, Joan got sent to like fat camp. So I think I think a lot of it is like stuff that they probably dealt with. And I think, especially in the eighties, you know, there was the and, and one of them was like I think at one point said there's nothing you can work worse to be in Hollywood than fat. And I think that's a lot of this. But also, it's just it's fucking terrible. Like. Well, I think they're trying to use it as a um, as a shorthand for her not caring about herself and being so um, unhealthy in her habits and 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 so pleasure seeking that she ignores her own health. But you could have just done that with the drugs. Yeah, but you didn't need. You know, all I mean, this. that was the real issue with the drugs. But it's I mean, like, she has a drug closet, a drug panic room. But the the drugs. But you want to talk about how fat she is? The drugs were never like it was never like her coat. Like she never got nosebleed. She never got like any of the stuff no. that would come with like a drug addiction problem. It was always about her fatness, and I found yeah. that to be really bothersome. It's um, almost like the fatness was a symptom of her drug addiction, which is yeah, not some eighties drug she was using. I mean, no, like, you right. know, that's she's, not. She's on a like she's on speed. Come on, but yeah. like. And I mean, again, that doesn't matter, but it's just the way that that was addressed is pretty horrifying. But in in light of that, like, it, it, if you take Olympia out of, if you took Olympia out of this book, which was all the, like, Olympia was the dumping ground for every fucking negative, you know, 80s And honest, thing. Like, honestly, Olympia, her entire function was to be an obstacle. Yeah. So I guess I might as well make it a big one, right? But oh I God, mean, like, was, she didn't... By the time I, they just had to dispose of her by the end of it because she no longer served a purpose. But like, it, uh, I, and I was sad about that because when it, when the when the book started out, you know, they had been schoolgirl friends, and she was yeah. hurt because when uh, th- their dads both showed up to drag them out of their Swiss boarding school because they were fucking everybody. Yeah, uh, and she was so hurt that Lucky had never called like contact her again. That that was like, never she, resolved. She like, could have been a never... really interesting character. Yeah, and, uh, they like just it's reduced late. her to like they just reduced her to like a one stop like schlock kind of thing, and I just I found it upsetting. I found the whole I don't and like the other thing is like all the positive attributes with Lucky were like described as her like how thin she was. Like this mm-hmm. book is this book is dangerous for you know like or this kind of like writing and thinking it's dangerous because it's like. All Lucky's positive, you know, like, well, she was so thin. She's trim. Her trim waist. Her, her, she's so thin. And it was just like, why aren't you saying that she's smart? Why aren't we talking about any of these other things? Why is it skinny mm-hmm. fat? Like, that. And we keep seeing these women in these white bikinis. And for some reason, white bikini to me is a shorthand for saying skinny. <laughs> yeah. No, there's <laughs> you no. Know? 
there's no chubby bras <laughs> running around in a well i mean that's not true like but yeah it's it's the ultimate 80s like i'm fit perfect tan is the white bikini so and, i mean you're, you're imagining the 80s uh, swimsuit which like really like worships the thigh like the high cut mm-hmm. yeah i mean yeah that's what you're seeing when you went they're all wearing these white bikinis yeah, yeah. So I do think that this, you know, I think that that part of it, I think the body image issue, but I mean, it's also fucking Hollywood. And this is what these books are supposed to be is tabloid esque. But like, there's more to it than that, I think, because I, to me, Lucky does seem like that woman who's like, oh, I don't have women friends because yeah. women are such bitches. Well, she, but she ends up being friendly with women. Jess. She ends up liking Jess. Yeah. They end up being like nice to each other. I think but it has that vibe. Yeah. It has that vibe that, like, you know, that all those women who say that they don't have women friends are yeah. toxic people. Oh, and yeah, it, sure. it, it has, like, a little bit of that to it. Yeah. I just, yeah, I think that this is a really, it's a really complicated, interesting book because, again, there's so much lady boss shit happening. But then when it comes to, like, how people look, if they're five pounds overweight, it's like, yeah, you fat bitch. So... <laughs> All right, God. All right. All right. Well, oh my goodness. Oh. Buckle up. Y'all ready? When it comes to consent, is this book more Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? It's complicated. Oh my God, this is. I I don't know. I think and these people all sell their daughters off at age like fifteen. Um, they they're trafficked. They're fucking marriage sex trafficked. Can I tell you, like, okay, I think what is interesting about this book versus let's say the flame and the flower so the flame and the flower uses rape as a device to remove virginity right yeah. it's a very deliberate device to put there to get you know people over the sex hop i think that this one <laughs> uh, this sex one up. i think what's upsetting about this especially in the wake of like all the shit with like me too harvey weinstein i think this is much more accurate than we're comfortable really kind of thinking about um because there's a lot of underage really underage sex in this book and yeah we're not when we say underage we don't mean 17 no we mean like 14 15 yeah being married at 16 but I think that what makes this much more uncomfortable, for me at least, like, within, like, the flame and the flower is I think this is probably rooted much more in people's reality. Probably. And the things that she writes about, of they, you know, like, Eden essentially becoming, you know, what happens to Eden is what happens to a lot of women or a lot of people that are abused. She's isolated. She can't leave. She can't go anywhere. She's just there at this person's you know whim and it escalates it escalates very i mean he hits her mm -hmm. once okay and then much later she he like forces her to have sex with his friends and mm -hmm. and then he like after that like later he beats her i mean it's like a boiling frog situation yeah. but she has nobody to go to because she's become so isolated i think that this is probably again especially in the wake of like all the stuff with harvey weinstein that's what's un like really uncomfortable about this is that it's like you can't just be like oh this is terrible for like it's shock value no i think it's it's rooted in a real thing so you know and especially if you think about like the stories that you hear about people like old hollywood women yeah, that much. you know yeah that were basically like I i'm trying to think of one that like there was one loretta one young well yeah, but, like, there was another actress that, you know, essentially her mom was like, well, go upstairs with this person. You mm -hmm. know? It's 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 real. And I think it's upsetting, but I think good on you, Jackie, for <laughs> even if you put it in a tabloid well, way. Well, what she's promising you is to tell you this is what the rich people do. Yeah. And it's not just what the rich people do, but it's what people do. And it's ghastly. Yeah. Now, but on the other hand, okay, so there's two kind of forks to this when it comes to consent thing. And and not like like often with the same people. So Lucky got um, forcibly married at age sixteen to a dude named Craven, who's a senator's <laughs> son. But then also she fucks who and what and where she wants. Yeah, she's very you know? empowered. I mean, like she's so like her sexual empowerment. Now, is. 
and Olympia's an sexual adult. empowerment. Like, se- like that is the thing. Olympia's like, I, people are a lot of times like, hey, fat bitch. And she's like, whatever, I'm rich. Come on, let's do it. And they're like, okay, yeah, you are. And you got big boobs. I like it. So, you know, <laughs> that is kind of an interesting thing with Olympia is that she's never, Olympia's never really body conscious. No, and she's never desexualized for being fat either. Yeah, so it, it is maybe, you know, in a way, kind of like, hey, but... A little. Um, <laughs> it's, it's weird. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's, it's it's a really complicated book, and, you know, good on Jackie Collins for putting all this shit in here, but, oh, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of, like, there is a lot of sexual assault in this, but again, I think if you're dealing with fucking Hollywood and turdy producers in the 1980s and 70s is probably very real to what people experienced i just think that okay so yes i agree with all of that but when you get to that dinner party where everybody's like well i was married at 14 like what no what the fuck maybe maybe these rich people are like that but oh my god are you serious well, I think, too, like, you got to remember, like, when they're at the dinner party, it's, like, the late 70s. So a lot of these people, like, when they're getting married at 14 would have been the 50s, 60s. So I know what you're talking about, but I think it's, you know. It's pretty, like, chill about it, all right? It's all mm-hmm. I'm saying. It's, like, everybody in this book who ever got married before the book happened got <laughs> married 16 or younger. Well, Francesca Fern is, like, 145 years old, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah, like, she drinks the blood of the dead. Yes. It, you know, it's completely like natural. Like, that makes complete sense for her to be like, you know, married at, the, you know, we think she's 12, but she's, you know, a thousand. So I don't know. But again, I do like that this, in this book, like, the women are basically fucking like men. And that you yes, got, you I do. got, I like that. You got Paige, who it's a shitbag thing to do, but she's judging, <laughs> she's juggling a husband and wife. I like that. It's like, a, yeah, it's it, that's pretty. Uh, look, honestly, it's it, it's morally neutral in this world. Even though it's like, even though she's doing it, not. I don't want to like again. I'm not. Ju- I, I I I can't judge it up against like a, a a contemporary book. But I think it's like Jackie is trying to like out of all the books that we've done. You can't from this judge time it against period, anything. This book is a. a <laughs> No, it, it, but, it stands alone. It stands apart. But I think what's interesting is like, you know, for again, this book, the first one's 1981. This one is 1985. And this is compared to other books that we read at this time, like this time period, she's giving us the most diverse sexual and like skin tone wise cast of characters. I'm not saying that yeah. she's doing it well or with like any amount of sensitivity, but she's trying. Agreed. Yeah, she is. And and I'm not giving her a like white lady medal, but like at the same time, like in 1985, that's a thing. Like you're trying to like make this a fully fleshed out world. So, I think that's really interesting. So, okay. I don't know who asked the last question. But... I I don't know. I'll just go. How badly are you judging your mom off for reading this book? I think a lot of people read this book. I I feel like I don't know if my grandmother like Somebody in my family read them because we had them. Like, it, I, I don't, don't know. think my mom would have read this, but but I, I so I looked in Goodreads when um, when I finished it, and like almost all the reviews were like, "Well, I stole it." Like literally, our our entire thesis, I stole it from yeah. somebody's nightstand. I I read this when I was whatever. It was confusing to me. I mean, this was an absolute like theft off a nightstand book. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because I feel like this one too. Like, what was interesting about her books? is they're they're bodice rippers but not in the traditional sense like there's not the heaving cover the covers were fairly like a danielle steel book where they're fairly innocuous but then holy shit the inside is the most batshit crazy thing i'm saying that yeah it's like a mario puzo jam that like you know it's i remember i want to say it's probably i like i have i want to say it's probably hollywood wise but i remember explicitly reading in one of these books it was a jackie collins book a guy having sex with a woman and like i remember (laughs) this slide so well because he was like her nipples were the size of half dollars 
And I was like, what does that mean? I was like, is it her? Like, I was like trying to suss it out. I was like, is it the whole nipple? Is it just the like, like, you know, but I just remember, I remember stealing this from somebody and reading it or like a Jackie Collins book. So it's, it is perfect for what we do. I am judging my mama, but it's all right. I mean, Uh, you know, I don't know. Everyone's doing it. Yeah, I don't know if my grandmother read these. Like, she was very, this would have been her jam. Like, you know, because she was like, it's very soapy, you know? Like, yeah, my mama would have not, or and, Grady and, Shiver would have not been into this. My mother, she might have read it. <laughs> I think she might have, like, looked down on it. Oh, my see, I my... mentioned it to her when I was over at her house watching my child learn how to ride a bike. Oh, so poorly. sweet. Oh, it's super cute. But, um, yeah, she didn't say whether she read it or not. She did say, oh my gosh, she's been listening to our podcast. She said she couldn't make it to the end of the last one because she can't do an hour and a half. And I'm like, oh shit, I didn't think you were listening. You talked oh my about God, this. that's so sweet. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Your mama's so sweet. All right. So, would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? It depends on if they filmed it, how, like, how they filmed it. Because Well, Nicolette Sheridan's in it. <laughs> It'd be a little too. I, I think that she would think that she was too good for it. Nicolette Sheridan was in it, but you know, um, I I don't know. Again, I think what we like we said. What's interesting about this is that Jackie Collins really does try to give us. There's a. There are brown people in this book and there are brown people with their own story and like their own agency and their own thing happening and it's not just one happy like you know servant there's not so i think it's and i mean the racism in this is actually like legit like real racism yeah i I don't want to like excuse it be like no no no. this is good it goes to story Mm -hmm. you know it's not like that but um it's it feels genuine in a way that a lot of this book does not actually. Right. And I think also it's interesting because, you know, I mean, Jackie Collins is originally, you know, from Great Britain and moved to America, but there's a different kind of, I feel like that give gave her maybe a little bit more fearlessness to address it where like nice white American ladies are so scared to deal with it. Because we have not read a book anywhere near this time period which had characters of color who are dealt with in any kind of realistic way. Right. Not written, yeah, written by white people. So I think. Oh, right. Well, I mean, even our, um, our, our earliest. Um, yeah, Adam and uh, Eva. Like, of color are after this. So, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is kind of unique in that way. Also in terms and, of um, sexual orientation. Okay. It, it, it comes, it kind of comes both ways. There is some like eighties homophobia. Yeah. Like some, like there's makeup artists who are sassy gay are, Fred, yeah, like, yeah, and there's like it looks like a transvestite or whatever, but there's also Paige who is just bisexual, yeah, like there's, she's just bisexual, like it's just like a normal thing for her. And I think like if you t- okay, so we take away the the lucky Stephen almost took up and their brother and sister, she's still putting an inner like an um like <laughs> she still is making a biracial man a sexually viable partner for her main yeah. character at one point. So it's, yeah, it is, it, it's interesting. So, um, and you yeah, like, there's Kay- a lot there. There's a lot, there, there, there's, there's a lot to discuss with that. In fact, Carrie, I'm like, I'm like, this book could be written. Carrie is probably the most sympathetic character in the entire book because she has the most fleshed out, like realistic mm-hmm. story, you know? And yes, like there's the, the racism is that you see in it is inherent in that like, why is the black girl got to be a prostitute? You know, like, but you gave her a story and it's a good story. And it's, I don't, yeah. So like her emotional, like, um, a come and go relationship with her son is, it feels really real. Like, it's um, so good. That, that they were really close, but then he got like this bug in his fucking bonnet about who his dad is. And, and it's a, like a point of division between them. And, and he's it, punishing her. So cruel. Yeah. Yeah, to like make her go and like hide in the bushes, like, is that him? Is that him? Yeah. You know? He's yeah. So I mean but he gets over it. Like he, he realizes what a dick he's been. Yeah. So uh by watching another child be uh <laughs> more child barrel. Neglected. Oh my god, this book, y'all. This fucking book. Alright, so yeah. This this 
You're not leaving Sorry. the house looking like that. So many outfits. Okay. No, but there are, but there aren't. Okay, so this, unlike Sydney Sheldon, if you're gonna run into these really fucking rich people, Jackie Collins understands that you gotta say what they're wearing. You gotta say how they smell like. You gotta say how they eat. And I mean, like she, she talks a lot about how they eat, but yeah. she still, she'll say, "Oh, well, she wore a white East Saint Laurent suit," and I'm like, "Yes!" But then. She doesn't tell you what it looked like. All like she, she doesn't give you the deets. All she'll do is just tell you how it looked bad on Olympia because Olympia was too fat to wear it. Like, yeah. um, there's. Uh, she'll tell you about the jewelry. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, this is Panther brooch, and you're you're seeing it in your mind right now. I want it but, right. I want it so bad. Like Christopher got me oh, some yeah. some jaguar. I, so I bought myself. <laughs> Jesus. I bought like this, I guess like a sweater. It's like a sweater dress and it's got like a, 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 a leopard on it. It's got a leopard. And I was like, yes, I'm, it's so 1980s and amazing. Like fucking lucky would have worn this shit. I have to take a picture. Of you. Well, I had to post it with the, the blog. But then Christopher bought me matching like leopard earrings to go with it. And I am, I can't wait. I need to get my vaccine just so I can wear this shit out. Like it's so... I will be cosplaying as Lucky. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, so you get a lot of like, you know, oh, she's got Halston on, but like, you don't really know what the It drops all these, but uh, okay, you go back to the James Bond thing. Yeah, if you ever actually read an Ian Fleming book, it drops 20 brand names a second. It yeah. is all about the brands, and this is like that exactly, but it doesn't actually give you the details. Yeah, exactly. It'll be like she read a red. She wore a red Halston dress. It was cut up to her pussy. Yeah. But then, like, well, okay, I need more fucking details. I feel like Jackie this. is expecting you to know what the fall collection like look like. So you'd be like, yes, <laughs> I, I know. Maybe, yeah. I know the dress. But I do like it's interesting. Like it was kind of it was such a blast from the past because like obviously she talks about Yusu and like I said, I really want a Yusu. But and if y'all have ever smelled Yusu, like Jesus. Like, I understand why my mother was like, no, you 13 years old, you are not wearing this. But then they talked about Joy, and Joy for the longest time was like the most expensive perfume. And I was like, oh but shit, this I is forgot like the about really, Joy. really, really strong perfume age. Yeah. And these people were like, I spritz four spritzes. And it's like, oh my God. No, you spritz <laughs> one spritz, and then you leap like a gazelle. Okay, and so then, when I was like, like 11, my dad got both me and my mother. Um, the Chanel de, uh, Chanel number five, I guess the, um, oh gosh, the, um, Eau de Parfum. Yeah. Not like the, not the super concentrated stuff, but the, you know. Yeah. And no, you spritz that in the room, you wait 10 minutes. Yeah. And then you leap through it. Okay. These women are bathing in this shit. So it is, my dad, it's bad. <laughs> my dad, my dad used to do this thing. It used to drive my mom crazy. We go to the, um. You know, we go to the mall, and my mom would be doing something. It'd be me and my dad, and I was like five or six. And my dad, we'd go to the perfume counters, and my dad used to call it changing your aura. And so, what he would do is he'd like, let's change your aura, and he would just he would just walk around and spray me with all the different perfumes. Oh my god! And my, my my nose, like my sinuses are just <laughs> and like my mom vomiting. Would, my mom would get so mad. She'd be like, "Damn it, Bobby." You made her smell like a French whore. And, like, we'd have to ride with the windows down. And I just thought it was the funniest thing because I'd have my aura changed. And you'd be like, let's change your aura. So that's always my what I think of. But Well, if you want to hear something really 80s, um, we had an Irish child for the summer. Because in the late 80s, what you had to worry about was my kids and, <laughs> and how they were growing up. Um, and so we got Tina. And so my mom let me do stuff with Tina that she would have never let me do on my own because, like, I was, you know, not a child who needed to have her horizons broadened. Um, and so, like, we would go, like, to the mall, and Tina and I would get all the perfumes <laughs> on our arms. And, yeah, my mom would, roll, like, roll them windows down. And, <laughs> like, and, and my mom is, like, sensitive to the smell. So just, like, walk past a fucking Yankee candle with my mother at the mall and, like, put your earplugs in because she's going to have, like, notes for the next ten minutes. So can you imagine if these two nine-year-olds were slathered in 80s perfume? How oh how God. how hard you would hate that? But she was yeah. she was mostly mostly kind about it because you know 
those Irish children. Yes. But if, Tina, if you're out there, I hope you're good. I hope you're Aww, doing well. Oh, Tina. So, yeah, it was, like, this book, yeah, you want more description of the outfits. But you do kind of, like, she does a really good job in, like, just as being somebody in the know. Like, she's writing what she does. Yeah, knows. it felt like she was giving you the gossipy details. Like, yes. you was your, your, your rich friend who went to the party and came back and told you yeah. what was up. Okay, question eight. Would your 12-year-old self have dog in your pages? So many. Like, well, yes, but it's weird because this book is all about sex, but there's not. Okay, so uh, I've never before read a book where there was a sex scene that was, I think, supposed to be sexy that used the word boob in it. I feel like I'll, I feel what's interesting is like from all of sex scenes from the male perspective are written dumb and stupid, but then like the ones from like the like lucky or whatever like they're good you know there are lots of scenes in this book that if you'd asked me if a man or a woman who'd written it i would definitely say a man yeah you know I'd definitely say a man boob the least possible sexy unless you say utter word <laughs> okay. for a woman's breast this book is gotta be boob this book is titillating it's not hot I think mm. is the big thing. Like it's titillating. No. It's like ooh, ooh, but it's not like yeah, you know. They're all doing it. They're all doing it all the time. But they're not. No, it's not sexy, y'all. Even the no, I was still dog eared all the pages because I like you know we've talked about in this podcast before. I was looking for information, and this yeah. book felt like it had information. Yeah, like. Even the weird raft sex wasn't. I was like, what? I, I, again, I was so hung up. I was like, I was like, this is now the official weirdest place that we've had it, other than the hammock sex where they're both on the fucking hammock. Like, yeah. how does hammock, like, <laughs> but um, it was, yeah. It, like, even that wasn't hot. But this is, we, we, we have, and moved I think that was supposed to be our forward. hot sex. We you know, and I was like, this is by several I'd, years. Yes. Yeah, like the again, the old like her old ball sex with Dim Dimitri, like that was good. Like when he it went was, down on her, it was gross and weird. Yeah, but, but it was like his thick fingers up in her. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I gotta say, it's like, it's I was like, all right, I'm here for it. Yeah, I'll buy into this. Like, but yeah, otherwise it's not. Yeah, like it's not. It's not a hot book. But it's a book about sex that is not sexy. Right. Yeah. Like, again, titillating, not hot. Like, it's like, ooh, yeah. weird. You feel like you're getting, like, you do feel like you're getting some kind of, like, insider scoop on stuff, but. Like, maybe if it's, like, a, an ethnographic study of the practices <laughs> yes. of, oh, God! of the idle rich. Oh, wait, wait. There, okay. So, all right. This is, this is mild. This, this is upsetting. One of the, like one of the instances of like weird casual terrible racism that happens in this book is i can't remember who's talking about it but he's talking about somebody's boobs and he the word boob is used but also describing those boobs as the boobs that they had seen in the national geographic oh yeah so it, there's things like that like where a lot of it is really kind of forward and progressive then it's shit like that so it's a wild dichotomy it is a wild book period yeah so, i cannot I, I feel that we are not actually conveying the experience of reading this book because it's not <laughs> possible to convey oh uh, but yeah all right, so what pairs nicely with the dumpster fire? I mean, I feel like it has to be a champagne with caviar, right? Because yeah. that's all they're having is champagne and caviar. Yeah, it's got to be a bottle of Dom. Yeah, a bottle of Dom. A bottle of Dom and your caviar and, like, possibly just weird dicks just floating around. Yeah, like a, a, a Dom with some cum in it, and you're like, ugh. Oh god! Like how bad do I want to drink this? <laughs> oh god! Dumb. Now I just want to yeah, die. It, it's like that. Like it really. I mean, like seriously. I you're like ew, gross. No, the book is like that. The reading the book the experience is like that. <laughs> oh, so I just read the last twenty percent in my car eating a public sandwich, 
Um, That's because, a good sandwich. Like, I had to finish it today. Yeah, it was a good sandwich. That was a good Sammy. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> but I was like, oh my, oh my, oh God. Oh, I don't know if I can, no, I gotta eat the sandwich because I gotta be back at work. Oh my God, it keeps going. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's it's wild. So this has been lucky. Like whoever, I, I had to look up who, who mentioned this. I hope it was what you wanted because, woo. But I mean, honestly. We read it. It, well, you, you know, read that motherfucker. It was, you know, it was. I had fun reading it. I enjoy, like. It's a corny jam because it's all eighties excess nonsense. So, I like. Yeah, I, I like it too. Honestly, I, it was really fun. I wish it had been fifty percent fucking shorter. Yeah, the book could have been way point, shorter. You're like, I've been reading about these assholes for a long time. Yeah, it was long, but all right, so. That's this has been our Jackie Collins Lucky. And you guys, if you enjoy us, if you like us, make sure that you rate or review us on whatever you listen to, your podcasting jam. You can follow us bodice tipplers at Facebook, B Tipplers at Twitter, Bodice Tipplers Instagram. You can also follow us, give us, you know, if you like us, give us a dollar or two or three at Patreon. So. And, and why don't you go and uh, do a review on YouTube? It's not clearly the work of uh, the the. <laughs> Please don't shout at us on the YouTube. diseased mind. All I want is you not to yell at me on YouTube. That's all I want is please don't yell at me. I kind of love those. <laughs> those are my favorite ones. The ones that we can make into stickers. Those are good. And again, if you want a sticker that talk that has some of our best worst reviews you can get those by becoming a patreon bodice yeah, tipplers I, I, the, or patreon.com slash bodice tipplers uh, my, my favorite thing about that we have done for, in like forever is that our response to like a review that is clearly a gender review you never hear anybody saying about a man's podcast oh your voice is so gross is that we made stickers and we've get them out yes yeah. So follow us there, and you guys, everything is crazy right now, so take care of yourselves. Take a breath, take a bubble bath, drink some wine, maybe read Lucky, maybe don't. I don't know what's going to happen in the world by the time that we release this, so I don't want to make any predictions, but I hope that we don't have to and that it's chill. It's all going to be fine. Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast.